Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Anti-Fragility Health Clinic. Uh, we welcome Dr. Daniel Johnson, our medical director. So this is like a conversation with Dr. Johnson. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank <laughs> you. And thanks for joining us, those who are joining us online and those who will be watching us later. Um, today, uh, Dr. Johnson and I will be discussing something that we have been talking a lot in the clinic and dealing with a lot of patients and most people out there also dealing with it. And that's the issue of stress and how stress impacts the immune system as we begin to move into the flu season, uh, right? We are not even sure how the flu season is gonna play out. There's talk about vaccinations for flu and for COVID. And also there's COVID-19 issues around there with masking, social distance and all of that. And then there's also the election. So lots of things to just explore as people are dealing with at an individual level. So Dr. Johnson, what are your thoughts around it as a general topic, stress? Well, it's, it's a huge topic. It's hard to know exactly where to start, but uh, uh, I will say that in my experience, stress is probably the number one underlying cause of most of the medical problems that I see. The human body has stress glands. They're called adrenals. And uh, adrenals are designed to handle brief occasional stress followed by long periods of rest and recovery. Unfortunately, in our modern crazy world, most of us get chronic stress with never enough rest and recovery. Well, in a very real sense, the adrenals are a critically important part of the foundation upon which the rest of our health stands. Uh, adrenals go through a daily cycle where they put out the maximum uh, uh, amount of stress hormones uh, first thing in the morning. And we need some of those stress hormones. If we'd have none, we can't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. We can't drag ourselves to work. And those hormones are cortisol. C cortisol is the number one. Yes. The and, main one that we're DHEA. talking about. DHEA. Yes. All yeah. right. Yeah. So those are regulatory hormones. Yes. That actually give us life, but also can, if they're t out of control, yes. then it becomes a real problem. Yes. If cortisol, when we're first stressed out, our adrenals tend to go into overdrive and then our cortisol levels go too high. And that carries with it a risk of uh, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and suppression of our immune system. Uh, if the stress continues and we don't pay attention to it and manage it, then uh, our adrenals become burned out and now they're underactive. Mm -hmm. And that's typically where you get people that are profoundly fatigued. Uh, instead of exercise, uh, regenerating them and energizing them, they feel worse after exercise. Including sleep, right? Sleep regenerating or rebalancing our yes. overall uh, yes. cortisol and DHEA. Yes. So, um, so would you you said you said stress was like the most important uh, uh, instigator, right? Yes. Uh, even though it's a good thing, but we we have too much of it. That's the challenge. How does it actually impact immunity, and how would you go around diagnosing stress? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to answer that question succinctly. Yeah. Uh, basically, high cortisol levels suppress your immune system, yeah. and too little cortisol also tends to stress your immune system. So okay. we, want, uh, we want to be in balance, not yeah. too much of a good thing, not too little of a good that. thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as far as managing stress, for most people that have uh, somewhat uh, high stress levels, but not too bad for most of those people, exercise is a very excellent way to burn off the excess adrenaline and to help us manage stress. That exercise can be in the form of uh, walking, hiking, uh, a little bit of jogging. Too much jogging is actually bad for you, but yes. uh, a little it's bit just of... Just enough, like the, three or four times a week yeah. for about 30 minutes. Yes. That, that's good enough. Yeah. So I, I saw you talking about adrenaline, and then you talk about cortisol. So give me a sense of the relationship between those two. Well, adrenaline is the thing that helps us to immediately, on the spot, deal Respond. with stress. Yes. If, um, if we have to fight for our life or run for our life, fight or flight, that adrenaline helps us uh, to have the energy and strength to do so. Yeah. Um, 
Cortisol is more of a longer term response to stress. Yeah, it's what we call uh, the metabolic reserve. Yes. That is required to sustain yes. uh, us and if the, the, if the stress is sustained. Yes. Uh, and so um, adrenaline is the physiological resilience yes. to, to perform uh, immediately there's an attack. Yeah. So it, overall, if we look at the full picture, Dr. Johnson, we are now saying we want to reduce stress or what they call down-regulate stress and up-regulate our immune system with regard to all the stressful challenges that we are currently facing. Yes. So how would you then advise, I mean, you talked about exercise. Yes. Right. And what else can we do? Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, one of the very first things we can do is to be aware of the fact that stress is not really about what's happening to us. Stress is really about how we're reacting to what's happening to us. That's why you can have two people in the same identical situation that might look very stressful to us from the outside. One of these guys is stressed to the max and the other guy is all zen. He's fine because mm -hmm. he's not reacting. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, coming to that realization was uh, was a big important part of uh, stress management. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, um, this is one of those lessons that for most people it takes a long time to sink in. And so a much quicker and much more effective way, there's a process uh, we have called Psych-K, which is a way of reprogramming our subconscious because- In how uh, we interpret yes, a lot of stresses. Yes, a, a lot of how we react to stress is mm -hmm. basically uh, determined by our subconscious programming. And yes. we're not consciously aware that we have these um, uh, reactions that are not productive for us, that, that are counterproductive. It's almost like we are reacting to cues yes. that have been programmed into our subconscious, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. And then, for example, people are watching television and they say, oh, Trump has COVID and he doesn't wear a mask and people are angry. Yeah. Right. As if it really matters to them. Right. Right. So they're, they're reacting to something that is just information and they're interpreting it and their response to it is really stressful. Yes. Which is really unhealthy. Yes, it's very unhealthy and yeah. it's, it's very sad that uh, so many people seem so easily triggered these days. Yes. Uh, triggering, that's just a, a form of stress. Uh, and the, we, the, the, the other thing that is in the, in the political correct language is microaggressions. Yes, <laughs> which is complete nonsense. Yeah, so you, you, you know, I was listening the other day, you know, in Canada now, if you are being, uh, tr uh, change your sex, yes. and somebody calls you the wrong sex, it's considered an act of microaggression, and it's very confusing. And so we have all these complication, complicated issues in life that is already complicated and we seem to be increasing it and therefore getting more stress. So there's a question here. So if I am exercising and I'm doing the things that you're talking about and I'm trying to manage my response so I'm not triggered by everything happening, how do I then manage my immune system as I'm managing stress. It's like ch life is so challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if you're successfully managing stress, yes. then that is going to all by itself have a very positive effect on your immune system. Yeah. Uh, having all your hormones balanced. Uh, yes. With all of us starting at about age 30, we have declining hormone levels. Uh, we're programmed that way genetically so that we will grow old and die and make room for the next generation. Mm. Part of growing old is a uh, diminishing immune system. Yes. Uh, we need to be taking our vitamin D3. Uh, most adults need to take uh, at least 5,000 units a day. Many need to take more, depending on what the blood testing shows. I know. Since I spoke to you, I've increased mine, even though I've not done my blood yet. I'm going to do it this Thursday Okay. Uh, for the Boston Heart. So, um, uh, so you talk about these things. So a lot of people think they're healthy and they're fine. So are you saying that for most people above 30 or as they approach 30 and older, there's a depletion in a lot of these resources that may have been natural. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, so most people should be replenishing. Most because people I just should. put something on, on our uh, Facebook Live where I said the only people 
who should not be taking supplementation, I don't know them. <laughs> so everyone should be. Is, pretty much. Is that your recommendation? Pr pretty much. Um, when you're a teenager, you're in a perfect abundant health. Um, you may be able to get by without very many supplements, although uh, there are things like zinc and magnesium that almost everybody is deficient in because the modern diet doesn't contain much of those. Yes. And so, uh, but then as we age, we get more and more depleted. And certain things, uh, everybody's heard of CoQ10, I presume. Correct. Uh, Ubiquinol is the better activated form of that. Uh, when we're young, we produce lots of that. But as we uh, get older, we produce less and less. So eventually, this ubiquinol becomes essentially a vitamin to us yes. at, at a certain age. Even though it wasn't a vitamin to our younger selves, uh, at a certain age, it becomes so one. So somebody like Mike, who's operating our camera today, and people like Elizabeth, uh, they think they're young. They are. And, and, <laughs> and they think they will not. Be, they look at us and they say, those old men, supplements right. is for them, right? Right, right, right. But they're going to have to learn a tough lesson really soon. Sure. That even for some young people, they're deficient in this critical just because of our food system. Yeah. You were talking about. Yeah. So the key advice is that people should exercise. Right. In moderation. In moderation. Yes. We don't want people running marathons every week. That's I don't want thing. my patients running marathons ever because uh, if you do that, you will do permanent damage to your heart. Wow. That cannot be reversed. Really? Now, if you have a very strong heart to begin with, you can run a lot of marathons uh, before it gets to the point where you have clinical symptoms. Okay. Uh, but you're still the, one of the top cardiologists in the world. Uh, Dr. Stephen Gundry has done tests on this yes. and has, uh, has demonstrated that uh, if you run more than 10K, you have just done permanent damage to your heart. Wow. So for all of those, my friends who want to run to the moon, right, it is not really that beneficial. Um, like I do in the morning, I try and do a couple of uh, high-intensity 10-minute runs. Um, for about 30, 45 minutes. I think that's yeah. good for me. Yes. Um, and, and so what exercise do you do, Dr. Johnson? Well, I personally yes. uh, do the lazy man's version of exercise. Which, which is like watch TV? No, no, no. Which is to say, <laughs> uh, at my clinic, we have a machine called a TurboSonic. Okay. And it's a platform you stand on and it vibrates up and down at yes. various uh, frequencies and yes. intensities. And even though this sounds impossible, uh, the research demonstrated that for most of us, 10 minutes on the turbosonic, where the machine does all the work, we're just standing there, yes. uh, gives more benefit than an hour in the gym for most people. Wow, that's wonderful. So, so that's the and lazy long, man's version. Yeah, how long have you been doing that? Oh my gosh, we got the turbosonic, I don't know, 12 years ago, something and, like and that. And you do it every day? Uh, three times a week usually. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So what would be your final advice as flu is coming, COVID-19 is still here, the elections is not done yet, and even after it's done, we may not even get some results. So you have spoke to us today about exercise. You spoke to us about our perception. So how does one switch? You were talking about the psyche. Yes. Um, that's a, a psychic, psychological kind of analysis and yes. treatment. How much is that? How much does that cost? Uh, you would have to ask the lady that runs that. I yes. believe so, it's in the ballpark of 200. Yeah, but you can call us and we can schedule an appointment for you on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you spoke about vitamin D3 uh, and the zinc and uh, selenium and those things that are going to boost your immune system yes. and the vitamin C. V vitamin C, yes. yes. And um, unfortunately, we can only absorb about 50% of the vitamin C that we swallow. Yes. And if we try to swallow too much, we get diarrhea. Yes. So giving it intravenously in large doses is a very efficient and effective way okay. of, uh, of keeping getting the levels, levels up. at yes. the right level. Yes. So um, this is to encourage you that we run a lot of... Um, IV therapies here in our clinic and also uh, at Dr. Johnson's clinic in the desert, at uh, the Longevity Clinic. Um, so check us on the website or call us to schedule something. 
so we can help you prepare, reduce your stress, upgrade your immune system, and build resilience, including metabolic reserve, as our flu season approaches. Dr. Johnson, thank you once again for my, this amazing conversation. My pleasure. Yeah, and uh, I'm hopeful that we're going to do this weekly. I'll come up with various sure. topics and sure. uh, you will give us deep insights into this. I'll do my best. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Johnson. Thank you.